But in order to actually get the details of what exactly is happening over there, we need to understand a little bit more about something called the runtime. So what exactly is runtime or what exactly do we mean when we say that something is happening at runtime? In order to understand this, one of the things that we need to see is what actually happens when a system boots up or when you switch on a microcontroller based system the first time. right? And the thing that we need to understand is there is actually something, this is after all an electrical or electronic component, right? which means that there is something called a system reset, which happens as soon as you power on the system. right? And what this reset does it, it actually explicitly at an electrical level in terms of voltages causes initialization of the registers. What does it do? It basically one of the most important registers that is present inside a microprocessor is something called the PC or the program counter. And one of the main things that you need to do at reset or at power on is basically make sure that the program counter starts from a known value. Right? The basic functioning of the CPU means that by default what happens is the program counter will automatically increment on every clock cycle unless the instruction that it has fetched is explicitly telling it to go somewhere else in which case there would be a branch. right? So as long as I manage to point my program counter at something that is a valid instruction to start with, it means that my system can actually start executing instructions right from the beginning, literally from the point where you have switched on the system, it has got reset, the program counter has started off at the value 0, I remove my reset condition, right? which is usually some particular pin held at a high voltage or low voltage. Once I remove that condition, I should find that my program counter on every clock cycle automatically starts incrementing by whatever number is required to fetch the next instruction. There is some automatically that address corresponding to that instruction goes out onto the address bus, the instruction comes back into the system and gets executed. Right? So far, so good. What it tells you is that if I can make sure that at reset, my program counter is given a value which when it goes out onto the bus should bring me back some instruction. It means I have got some level of control over how my system is going to operate. So what we do is that we basically at system start we guarantee that there is a known starting address that is loaded into the program counter. The simplest value is probably just have the value 0. Right? But certain CPUs do not use the value 0 as the default, they use some other value, but it does not matter as long as it is fixed. Right? Now the interesting thing is, especially on microcontrollers, you might find that this starting address can actually be modified sometimes through jumper settings or pin settings that are actually connecting different voltages to a specific pin on the processor. Right? And just by choosing that, you can actually change different ways in which a particular program is going to or a particular microcontroller is going to behave. You could even change the source from which it actually tries to boot up. Okay. Now, what does this booting process actually do? Right. All that we do is literally the first instruction in most cases is going to be not anything complicated, just branch or jump to another location in memory where there are actual instructions on what to do. So let us take our simple example of the blinking LED. At power on, what happens is that the program counter gets the value 0 and I now have a couple of options out there. All that I really need to do, since we know that you know our flash memory in our system started at some address 800, how did I get that address? That is physically a property of the processor and the system that I have built or the ARM processor itself. It tells you that flash is expected to be at this location and RAM is expected to start at this location. right? So there is really nothing much you can do to change that, which means that the linker and loader have to basically use those addresses in order to get data into the system. Now once you have that, what you can do is that your instruction which starts off at address 0, all that it needs to do is basically jump 
to the address 08 whatever it is that is the beginning of flash memory and you are pretty much all set to go right that instruction is basically in most cases we have something called a reset handler right it's a function that you can write which can be loaded into a specific area of memory and which basically tells you that on reset this is somehow the program that needs to get triggered and executed right thereafter pretty much given the fact that you can branch to any other location in memory i should be able to run any code that i want right even if it is code from external storage provided that i have ahead of time manage to put the code into those locations in memory right? so in terms of you know let's say that you are using an arduino based system or an stm32 nucleo board when you actually download the hex file or the binary onto the system that's literally what's happening right that download process is taking whatever compiled code that you uh, generated and putting it into a set of memory locations at the which start from a known address usually that 800 depending on the kind of processor that you have right of course that's for the stm32 nucleo series for arduino it could be something else but all that needs to happen after that is you pretty much reset your processor and when the processor resets it starts by executing an instruction which will usually tell it okay jump to this particular memory location and start executing the instructions that are there and you are done whatever you had compiled and linked and then loaded into memory will start to execute right so the interesting thing what you need to keep in mind over here is there are sort of two ways by which microcontrollers in particular can execute programs one of them the example demo that i showed with the led blinking is what's called bare metal in bare metal mode what we are doing is we directly load executable code into memory there is no runtime as such except for what you have already compiled into the elf file right there is no other program that is capable of loading your program in turn into memory whatever you have written is directly what's running on the cpu right so this is usually referred to as bare metal right the loading part over here is usually done through some kind of debug interfaces right you need a usb cable or something of that sort in the case of the arduino right which allows you to program the board that's literally what's happening out here it basically uses some kind of an interface to directly put the code that you have written into a part of the memory of the processor which will get activated as soon as you come out of reset right and mostly what this would do is basically put it into some kind of flash or other known start address so that as soon as the system basically uh, resets and comes out of that it's able to start executing instructions from there right the alternate and as you can imagine this is somewhat limited in scope you can have only one program changing it is difficult right you need to sort of make sure that you reflash the entire system and so on so the alternative is usually to use something called an operating system in an operating system you simplify this you basically say that yes i still have to go through the same process because when I come out of reset, all that I will do is jump to a particular location and start executing instructions there. But you just make sure that that very first program that you run, which is usually called the kernel, right, is going to do some interesting work for you. It doesn't do com computation. It doesn't do any sophisticated communication. All that it does is it sets up everything else. It initializes subsystems and peripherals and then it goes into a mode where it can load other programs into memory and execute them right so the operating system basically makes it possible by taking over as the first program that runs on your system it then takes over and says any other program that you need to execute you don't need to put them again into flash and then you know reset your entire processor i'll take care of loading them into some places in memory and jumping to the start so that you know they can run from there on Right. So, bare metal and operating systems are the two primary modes in which either a microcontroller or a CPU based system can operate. So far, we have been looking primarily at bare metal systems. There will be context later where we will also look at the basics of operating systems and how they can be used.